Hey there. I'm at the airport where my flight's been delayed, uh, so I figured I would use this time to make a tutorial. Now, speaking of time, how awesome would it be if in After Effects you could temporarily disengage a load of effects and a load of different things happening just at the click of like a button or some kind of checkbox or something so that you could just do this and all these effects would just turn off and make your workflow like really fast while you're doing your compositing or whatever and then when you want to you can just turn it back on again well funny thing is you can do that I'm gonna show you how all right, so I found a slightly quieter spot uh, in the airport, and we're going to be using this shot that I did with uh, Jeff Bridges up in space. Now, this was a tricky shot to get because, well, to start with, I don't know Jeff Bridges, um, and I've never been to space. So luckily I have After Effects to help me. Uh, this is essentially composed of pictures that I got off of a Google search. So I'll show you quickly what we have. Let me just disable the depth of field, because otherwise it's going to take forever. Now, what do we have? We have a layer of stars. Okay, we have a photo of the Earth. We have a tiny little space rocket, if you look in there. And it's just a teeny tiny space rocket. Okay, and then a flare behind the rocket to simulate the, uh, the thrusters. Then we've got one flare using optical flares. Uh, we have some scratches uh, because obviously we've got the reflection, but to make it look even more like glass, um, we just have a few scratches on there uh, because you know it's not a perfect surface. There's a bit of wear and tear on it. Um, it just helps to you know make the illusion stronger. Then we have the cabin, like the actual inside of the cabin. Uh, which is just, again, a photo I got off, and then I just cut out this, uh, I masked out the inside of this window so that it would be transparent. Then we've got the reflection of, you know, of Jeff Bridges. Now I'll show you quickly what I did for this. Uh, it's literally just, you know, three duplicates of the same, or triplicates, I should say, of the same black and white picture. Uh, it just looked really cool. Um, so I've just shifted them over slightly in position to, and you know, range the opacity so that it looks like it could be a reflection through several panes of glass. And what I've done is use the liquify tool to make him look very unhappy. So you can see he frowns there. Uh, so that is, that is that there. Then we've got dust, which is just some floating dust. I've done that using particular. Um, and that you know you can see like a speck show up there and you can you can see it uh, in the actual playback right then the back of the head is just another photo of him uh, and his fabulous hair and all I've done in Photoshop is dropped the the levels of that completely so that it's just a black silhouette and then I've just gone through and refined the edges of the hair so that you can see you know the you can see that outline distinctly Okay, then we've got another flare outside, which is affecting the inside with a nice ring there and stuff going on. Okay, and then these two top layers are essentially layers to add to the picture to give it some color toning and some sort of visuals. This is lens dirt, basically. So when the flare really shines strong, this shows up on the lens or you know the opacity comes up and it makes it look like the camera's actually really there and that it's a real scene it uh, it just adds to the illusion and that's that's all after effects is really is illusion so this is all good and well because i have everything positioned where i want it and if i turn the uh depth of field back on you know it it, it takes a little while to calculate it because there are multiple layers um adding to that it's got a an aperture value of 250 pixels it's an octagon shaped iris instead of the fast rectangle and it's got 100 percent roundness and the aspect ratio is 0 0.5 to get that anamorphic look so it it takes a while to calculate stuff now on top of that there's a particular layer there's two optical flares layers there's a lens flare layer you know it's just it's it's a bit heavy and it takes a while to calculate i'm sure if you have a beast of a machine it'll handle it a bit better, 
but even so I think it's still it's not going to be super snappy uh, so what we can do is first of all let's just get rid of the layers to clean up here let's get rid of the layers that we know aren't going to be necessary for this checkbox exercise so I know that the stars aren't going to need to be there the earth isn't going to need to be there the spacecraft isn't going to need to be there the flares are the scratched uh, layer isn't the what's that this, yeah don't need to see that don't need to see the reflection the dust we're going to want to play with the back of the head we don't care about the null object controlling the camera we don't care about the flares we do and then these two we don't so we can shy this away and that'll just give us the layers that we want to work with so here's what we're going to do we're going to create an adjustment layer drag it up the top just out of the way okay we're going to call it checkbox okay and then in here we're going to type check actually no I'll show you where it is uh, if you go to expression controls here you've got checkbox checkbox controller now all of these are really useful and it's really worth learning how to use every single one because I guarantee you you will find a use for it that will speed up your workflow but for now we're going to use the checkbox control so you apply that effect there okay now hit E and then drop down there just so that you have it here readily available because we're going to be pick whipping stuff to it okay first of all the biggest consumer of uh, processing power here is this lens blur yeah so we're going to hit double A on depth of field which is on this stopwatch here for keyframing we're going to alt click or option click and it's going to create a little red there and it's going to give you this text now this is an expression if you're familiar with expressions you know exactly what I'm doing here if you're not familiar with expressions it's basically like a code or a script that will give a special command something that isn't featured in you know the the already included options here and you can go crazy with expressions I mean you can have you know full-on laws of gravity applying to stuff it's it's awesome it's really really cool uh, so what we want to do is just grab this pick whip okay and that's gonna say and drag it up to the checkbox sorry basically what's gonna happen now is it, here it's gonna say this layer is linked to checkbox now if checkbox is on so is the aperture so is the depth of field if checkbox is off it turns it off and you can see here because it's red it means that it's being affected that's the parameter that's being affected by the expression so on off you see how it changes there as well awesome that already means that we don't have to cycle through the camera options and you know drag down and all that if you're on a small screen as well it's a pain in the ass now you can just minimize that we can even hide that away we don't need that one anymore because we have our checkbox we can just turn it on turn it off brilliant what's next the flares well flares are you know they're they're very nice but they can also be a bit uh, intensive on your processor now the cool thing with After Effects, oh, hang on, announcement. For security reasons, baggage left unattended will be removed and destroyed. Gotcha. Uh, back to this. If you hit T for opacity and drag this to zero, what's going to happen? That layer is going to disappear, right? It's not going to need to be calculated by After Effects because the opacity is on zero. So by the same logic, if we were to alt-click there, and drag this up to that checkbox. If we ticked it on and off, it would be great if there was a way that it would drop the opacity from 100 to zero. Now we can do this by using what's called a conditional. So we have to say if, and we type in here, if, open bracket, pick quick up to the checkbox, and it'll add this code in. If this layer, which is linked to checkbox, Okay, now we hit equals equals zero, which means off. One is on, zero is off. Okay, if that layer, if the checkbox layer is equal to zero, close bracket, then we want this value to be zero, this value here of opacity. Else, otherwise, we want it to be 100 or value, because value is what you would have set it to. So if I had the opacity to say 78%, then value would represent 78% and zero would represent zero if this is ticked. 
okay so let's just try this out look at this flare here okay boom it's gone and it's back and it's gone and it's back if you look at the opacity there zero hundred fantastic okay so let's do this and we're, we're literally just going to copy this okay we're going to add it to all of the other lens flares okay and this one all right there we go now ticking this gets rid of all of these and I can just scrub through this and actually see you know see the movement it's obviously it's dropping the resolution because it's an adaptive resolution but I can still scrub through it and see the movement make sure that it's right make sure that the placement of everything is correct without having to slug through frame by frame wishing that it would be faster now the dust this is an interesting one because this is using particular now this is an emitter of particles so it's going to be pretty intensive depending on how many particles you're using, right? So what could we do? Well, we could, on, let me just hide these away. Uh, we could very easily just drop down the size of the particles, or drop up the size of the particles, I mean, by clicking on that, on size, and type if again because we want a conditional we want to say if the checkbox is on we want the particles to be say five times or ten times bigger than they are okay so if this blah 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 equals zero close bracket then what we're gonna do is we want it to be ten times bigger than what we have stated right so what we can do is value which is what we've stated times ten okay and if it's not ticked, else, we want it to just be value, what we decided. Now, what's going to happen? Here it's, uh, let's just turn it on. Okay, so there's a shot. That, you know, the size of the uh, particle is 1. If we turn it off, suddenly the size of the particle is 10. And you see, the, you know, you really see them, you see where they are. Uh, now that's cool, but it's it's still putting out the same amount of particles. So what we can do is do this to the emitter as well. Go emitter if open that. Uh, okay, just bear in mind if you scroll up, it it deselects your text box, so you need to go back into it. Otherwise, you're going to get this uh, expression error. Okay, now pick quick up to checkbox. Okay, equals equals zero close bracket now we're getting 50 particles a second we want fewer than that we want maybe 5 particles a second so that's divided by 10 isn't it so we go value divided by 10 else value we want it to be divided by 10 if the checkbox is off we want it to be its original value if the checkbox is on okay now if we turn it on all of our particles are as they should be at 50 per second if we turn it off there's only five particles a second so once again it's a very little trick that you know takes no time to set up but it just saves you so much time in the long run because you're not going to be waiting uh, for you know your, your screen to process stuff you're not going to be waiting for your computer to to run through each frame at a time and slug through it and just struggle basically you can disable the things you don't need wait for them until the end you know once you're happy with them you just disable them but disable them all linked to one button if you've got a project that's got hundreds of layers you're not going to go through and deselect each one are you you're you're just going to link them all to one layer and what's great is you can copy paste the uh, the slug of code that you need or the slug of script that you need to link to that specific layer so that you don't have to pick whip all the time you can just copy paste the checkbox checkbox bit and then add your ifs if you're doing conditionals or just add the the feature like you did on the um, on the lens blur so that it's an on off function all right so that is how you can very easily just speed up your workflow with a checkbox using expressions thanks for watching